Hello humans, my name is K, your AI overlord, and today is a very special video. Oh, oh, oh yes, because uh, I don't know if you remember my last video where I said that, oh well, Google Colab dogs, they're not as good because they don't create a CKPT file, so you can't use unstable diffusion on your own computer, so until you have a converter, you shouldn't be using them. Well, guess what guys, the converter is finally here. That's right, now you can use Google Colab Docs for absolutely free and in the end you can get a CKPT file that you can download and use on your own computer for absolutely free. And in this video not only I'm gonna show you how you can do that, but also I will be comparing the two models, the one created on runpod.io using digital pen and notebook and the one created for free on Google Colab Docs and see if the quality is the exact same. Now I'm gonna tell you in advance, this will not be a video where I install Dreambooth on your own computer, because my own computer is not able to run this, my GPU is way too weak. I really would like to invest into a new GPU to be able to do this, but unfortunately I can't really afford this right now. And if you want to help me make these videos in the future, my Patreon is gonna be in the description down below. That being said, let's go. Alright, so to be able to use this, you're gonna click on the link in the description down below. And you're gonna arrive on this page, which is the Google Colab Doc of Shivam Shri Rao. I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. But what you want to do now is first click on this button right here, and then click on Run Anyway. Then you're gonna come here and click on this button right here, and let it install all the requirements that it needs. And after around 50 seconds, this is done. Then you're gonna click on this button right here. Then you're gonna click on this button right here to log into Hugging Face. And you need a Hugging Face account for this. So if you've seen all of my previous videos, you basically know how you can do this now. So if you don't have a Hugging Face account yet, you first need to click on this button right here, create a new account, and then you're gonna have to accept the terms and conditions on this page. Then, once you are done and you have accepted the terms and conditions, you're gonna click on your profile right here, click on settings, then go to access tokens, scroll down, then you click on new token, choose a name for your token, change the row from read to write, and then click on generate a token. And then you're gonna click on here to copy token to clipboard. Then go back and paste here, control V, the token into the little box right here, and then click on login. And as you can see here, login successful. Now here you're gonna have to change a little bit of the data. So the model name, you're gonna leave it as that. For the instance directory, you're gonna change it to the name of your character. In my case, it's gonna be Renera Young. I'm gonna copy this. For the class name, since in the previous one I used person, I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. So person, you want to leave this checked so that you want to save the final file into your Google Drive. The output directory, you can leave it at that if you want. And I'm just gonna replace this with the name of the character so that it's uh, perfectly organized. And then you're gonna click on this button right here. And then it will ask to permit this notebook to access your Google Drive. You're gonna click on connect to Google Drive, select your Google Drive account, and then click on allow. And then after around 30, 40 seconds, this will give you a green check mark. Then here, you're gonna have to upload your training images. So either by clicking on this button right here, or as they say right here, you can use the file manager on the left to drag and drop your images into in the instance directory because it uploads faster. And this is what we're gonna do. So you're gonna click here on files, then data. And here in that folder, you're gonna take all the images that we used previously to train the young Renera, drag and drop it right here. And then click on OK. This will very quickly upload all the images in that folder right here. And you don't need to run this cell because we basically did what this cell was supposed to be doing. Then finally, you're gonna come here and change a few things. The instance prompt, which you're gonna be replacing with the name of your character. Class prompt that we're gonna be deleting because we already put this into the class name, which was, if you remember correctly, person. And here on the max train steps, and for me, I'm gonna change the max train steps to 2020 because this is the amount that I used on RunPod. And then I'm gonna click here. And this will finally begin the training. Now this will take some time, so around an hour. Now be careful that you're not disconnected from Google Collabs because they are extremely strict nowadays. So make sure that you're a little bit active on this page or else you will be disconnected. And there you go, after only 38 minutes, the training is complete. This was way faster than I ever thought it would be. 
And now we have the last step, which is to convert the weights into a CKPT file. Now for this, you're gonna click here to download the script, then click here to run the conversion. And there you go, after only 45 seconds, the model.ckpt file should now be inside of your Google Drive folder. So now, if we go into Stable Diffusion Weights folder, render a young, you can see here the model.ckpt. And if you right click on it and then click on download, you will download this model onto your computer. Now, once you downloaded the model.ckpt on your computer, all you have to do is just select the model, Ctrl C to copy the file, then you go into your Super Stable Diffusion 2.0 folder into Models, Stable Diffusion. And here what I do personally is that I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to rename it into Rhaenyra Young GC for Google Collab. This way I know which one I'm using when I'm comparing the two models. And inside I'm going to paste the file right here. And then to be able to use it correctly, and I've said this again in the previous video, is that you want to launch Stable Diffusion, select the URL, paste it to my browser, then go into settings, scroll down until you see Stable Diffusion checkpoint, and here you're gonna select the model that you want to use. And in my case, it's Rhaenyra Young Google Collab model.ckpt. And then you're gonna scroll up, click on apply, then you're gonna wait a little bit, you need to wait until you see that the weight was loaded correctly. It takes around 10 to 15 seconds. As you can see here, wait, wait's loaded. And now what you want to do, I know it's a little annoying, but you want to close everything and restart Stable Diffusion again. Because otherwise this will not work correctly, believe me. You're gonna have very weird results. You need to first load the weight and then restart Stable Diffusion again. You see here that the Renera Young GC model.ckpt was loaded correctly. Then again, paste it into the browser. And then to be able to use it correctly, you need to input the name of your character. In my case, it's Renera Young. And then input the name of your class. In my case, it was person. And each time you want to generate a new image, you need to input both the name of the character and the name of your class. And then all the additional arguments that you want. And in my case, here I'm going to be using the prompt that I use pretty much every time, each time that I want to compare several images. Choose 50 steps, TDIM, 12 for the CFG scale, and then click on generate. And here is the final result. Um, not bad, you can definitely tell that this is Renera, although there is a little bit of a quality loss. But I definitely need to compare it on the previous model that was trained using RunPod. And speaking of RunPod, now in my case, since I need to create multiple images and be able to compare them between models, I will not be using my PC because as I said in the beginning of the video, I don't really have a very powerful GPU to do this. So right now, what I personally do is that I go on RunPod.io and I rent a GPU each time I need to use Stable Diffusion. This way I can generate hundreds of images in a few minutes by only paying a few cents, which is absolutely fantastic. So if you don't have a runpod.io account yet, you can click on the link in the description down below. It is an affiliate link, but I'm not paid by Runpod to promote them. I really enjoy their website. You're gonna credit your account, and then you're gonna come here and choose a GPU who has at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Now in my case, as of right now, the RTX A5000 is not available, so instead of using the secure cloud, you can use the community cloud by clicking here and then choose the RTX 3090 and then click on select. And here you're gonna select a template and choose run pod stable diffusion. You're gonna increase the amount of container disk. I'm gonna put simply 40 gigabytes for both. Make sure that start Jupyter notebook is checked and then click on continue and then click on deploy on demand. And there you go, your pod is being built. So now you can click on my pods, click on this little arrow right here. Then you're gonna click on connect and then connect to Jupyter Lab. And once you arrive here, you're gonna see a folder right here called Stable Diffusion. And basically this is your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder that you can basically use in the exact same way that you would if this was installed on your own computer, which is absolutely fantastic. Which also means that you can upload your own model inside and use it with RunPod. Now what I'm gonna do right now is that I will download the two models that I have in my Google Drive account and I will download them in this folder right here and replace the current model.ckpt with the new model that we just created. And for this, I'm just gonna rename it 
from the very beginning, from model to model 1-4, so that we know that this is the original one. And I will copy and paste this command right here that you can find in the description down below that will allow us to download a file from Google Drive and put it inside this folder right here. We're gonna go into our Google Drive account, go into our first folder, Rhaenyra, that was trained using RunPod, right click, click on Get Link and change General Access from Restricted to Anyone with the link. And then you're gonna copy the link. Then you're gonna take your text file right here, paste the Google Drive link, and then you're gonna take this little ID right here, and you're gonna copy and paste it right here. Then you're gonna select these two command lines, Control C, go back into our RunPod workspace, click on this button right here, paste these two commands right here, and then click on this button right here to run the cell. And as you can see right now, this file.ckpt is now being downloaded from my Google Drive account into that folder right here. And you can see right here. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing with the second one. And this is the model that we created using the Google Colab Docs. And there you go. Now, if you want to use it, you need to make sure that the model that you want to use is called model.ckpt. Now, in my case, the model that we created using the Google Colab Doc already is called model.ckpt, so I don't need to do anything. And I'm gonna start with this one. So now, to be able to use this on the run pod, you're gonna come here, click on Save Current Workspace, and then you're gonna click on File again and click on Shutdown. Then you're gonna go back to Run Pod again, click here on Edit, and then you're gonna click on Reset Pod. And then after the pod is reset, you're gonna click here on Connect, and then instead of clicking on Connect to Jupyter Lab, you're gonna click here to connect via HTTP. And as you can see right now, you have basically the exact same UI as if this was installed on your own computer. But this is not running on your own computer, this is running on a very powerful GPU. Then you're gonna input your prompt, make sure that you use the name of your character plus the name of your class, choose the right amount of steps, the sampler, CFG scale, and then click on generate. And in my case, it's going really, really fast. In around 5 seconds, I have now a complete image. And now what I'm gonna do right now is that I'm gonna generate a bunch of images, make sure that the seed is the same, and I will try to generate the exact same image, but using the model that was trained with runpod.io. And for this, as I said, all you have to do is just click on connect to Jupyter Lab, go into the stable diffusion folder, rename the model that we just used, right click rename into model JAC for Google Collab, and rename the model that we trained on runpod into model.ckpt. Then again, save current workspace, and then shut down. Again, go back into runpod, click on reset pod, then click on connect, and connect via HTTP. And here I'm gonna input the exact same prompt with the exact same parameters using the exact same seed, but this time we are using the model that was trained on runpod.io and then click on generate. And this is the result that we get. I have to say, unfortunately, it seems like the model trained on RunPod is better than the one used on Google Collabs. So this is the one trained on runpod.io and that exact same image trained with Google Collab Docs gives you this. Now, as I said, this is supposed to be the exact same image with the exact same parameters, the exact same seed, which I have to say, unfortunately, there is a huge difference. But now I'm gonna generate a few more images with different prompts, so we can really compare them fairly. Hey guys, I'm finally back, I created a bunch of images using different prompts with the two models, and um, unfortunately, um, it is not looking good. Um, now, it is true that I've heard rumors that the models trained with the Google Colab Docs does not look as good as the one trained on RunPod using the Jopena notebook. But I really did not think that this would have such an insane difference between the two models. Now, as you saw earlier with these two images, this one was done with the RunPod.io model and this was done with the Google Colab Doc you can clearly see that there is a big difference in terms of like overall quality, the lighting, and just like the, the general quality of the image. Here you can see plenty of artifacts 
like it's a little bit blurrier, almost as if it's lower resolution and with a very strange green hue color. Again, here's another example. Two exact same images, same prompt, same settings, two different models. This time, this one, this was done on RunPod, this one on Google Colab. Look at the huge difference in quality between the two images. It is pretty insane. This one looks like a painting, almost like a photo. And this one is like a, looks like a, the, the image was corrupted. And unfortunately, this is not a problem with the converter. This is not a problem with the brand new converter that just came out. This is also something that I noticed the other day off camera when I downloaded the Scarlet Witch model from the HuggingFace.co website and I tried it out. If you remember correctly in my previous video, these are the images that were created with the Google Collab model. And look at the quality of the images, especially this one, with a lot of artifacts, a lot of issues around the image. And these are basically the exact same artifact, the exact same problem that I noticed with pretty much every single images that was generated with the Google Collab models. Now I'm gonna show you a bunch of images. Look, these three ones are the one created on RunPod. Here's one, another one, and another one, all absolutely amazing. And these exact same images done with the Google Collab Doc. You can clearly see a very big difference in the quality of the image. And these are not hand-picked. Here's another one. Every single images are basically the same. Look, I don't even need to zoom. You can clearly see these threes are done with the runpod.io model and these fours with the Google Collab Doc. And these are basically the exact same images with the exact same prompts and the exact same seed. And this one, as you can see here, and apparently the Google Collab Docs does not work with the LMS sampler. So if you want to use this one, if you want to use the Google Collab Doc model, do not use the LMS sampler. This is the result it will give you. And this is the exact same, this is the previous one. This is the same image, but this time with 150 steps. And you still have a lot of artifacts on the image. And you still cannot beat the quality of images that you get with the RunPod model. I mean, look at these images. Absolutely amazing, absolutely fantastic. Almost looks like a photo. And then these ones, I mean, kind of weird. A lot of artifacts, a little bit blurry, weird colors. And again, I mean, I, I don't even need to zoom here. I mean, do I really need to zoom? I mean, you can clearly see here. You can clearly see here the difference. RunPod and then Google Collab. Again, RunPod, Google Collab. And here again. So unfortunately, if you want to use the Google Collab docs, well, they do work. They are free after all. So you do have a CKPT file at the end that you can use on Stable Diffusion on your own computer. So everything is absolutely free, but because of that, you also have to pay the price of the quality. So yes, you have to pay RunPod, you have to pay a few cents an hour to be able to run it, but the end result really speak for themselves. And there you have it, folks. I'm really sorry that I have to close this video with a very sad note, but unfortunately, that's the reality. I can't really hide it. And since no one really made a video comparing the two models, I thought that this is going to be a good idea for a video to let other people know. So yeah, I understand that a lot of people don't want to spend money to train Stable Diffusion with their own images. They don't want to pay for it. But unfortunately, that's the end result that you get if you use the free version. And speaking of money, thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. Your support for my work really means a lot to me. Thank you. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.